Well, if there was any list that you could expect to not hear about the Hayabusa for 10 minutes, you might think it was this one, but this is Yammy Noob, my guy. We literally have to mention it in every video or the world will implode. But at least we won't be dunking on it today, because today's list is all about the dorkiest, nerdiest, coke bottle glasses wearing, pocket protector having, two wheel turnoffs you could ever ride. These are the kind of bikes that when you tell your parents you're riding one, they're not worried that you're going to get hurt so much as they're worried about not being able to show their face in public ever again. Okay, maybe that's a little harsh, but these bikes are just a little boring. They do everything super well, sure, but they're very unassuming, and if you decide to pick one of these up, you should probably also invest in a high-vis helmet and jacket combo just to seal the deal. And before all the dislikes come pouring in, as with any of my roast-style videos, none of these bikes are bad, I'm just saying you chose poorly. We're having a little bit of fun today. Let's jump right in with number 7, the VFR 800 Interceptor. Yup, this one was my personal steed for a whole year, and I can tell you from experience that it is a purebred, to-the-bone nerdmobile. First off, let's talk looks, because motorcyclists are, as I've said many times before, vain creatures. Well, if you look at it briefly, it looks pretty cool. It's got a great red paint job, nice lines, fancy LED headlights with an almost X-shaped look about them, and no, I'm not describing a Panigale. That's the thing about the VFR, it's basically a Panigale with a dad bod. If you put them side by side, a normie might not be able to tell the difference, but a rider will be able to tell right away. It only gets worse when you sit on it. The dash couldn't look any more like it came out of a 2005 Honda Civic if it tried. It's this big LED affair, which while it tells you everything you need to know, it's really not much to look at. The best part of the dash is the big sweeping analog tachometer they put front and center. That is a nice touch, I will happily admit, and when you take the bike for a ride, the V4 soundtrack makes you feel like a million bucks, especially when that VTEC kicks in, yo, and you achieve maximum suck. You get all four valves per cylinder, you feel really awesome until you get your doors blown off by a 600. You see, the VFR was meant to be a commuter or a sport tour, and as such, Honda didn't care about the weight and built the thing out of depleted uranium, and it comes in at an almost boosa sized 500. 130 pounds wet. If you pick up the Interceptor and don't want to go full dad mode, make sure you get the rear seat cowl, delete the passenger handlebars, and do something about the mirrors. It'll disguise the bike for just a little bit. That or do what I did and trade it in for a supermoto as a giant overcompensation. That works too. Number 6, the R1250GS. I gotta do it to them, but the only folks out there riding on R1250GSs are 40-something divorcees trying to reclaim some of their lost masculinity, and so they dump 30 grand into the fanciest BMW they can get that also isn't a big crotch rocket, because, let's face it, they're a little bit scared about getting a motorcycle. One wonders why they would pull a trigger on a 550-pound adventure bike as their starter, but hey, they've got something to prove in a heavier-than-average pocketbook. But Spite, the GS, was the bike of Obi-Wan Kenobi and his buddy to travel around the world on. And it's so good, and I definitely will be hitting some single track on mine. Well, if you recall, the long way round was intended to take place on KTMs, wink wink. And a lot of things have changed in the adventure bike marketplace since then. First of all, ADV bikes have faced a sort of schism, because basically people realized they didn't want to chuck a 500-pound-plus motorcycle off-road, and thus lighter-weight ADV ADVs became de rigueur, and big ADV bikes turned into sport tourers. Secondly, ain't no one willing to dump their brand new status symbol motorcycle into a ditch, so the R1250s have become the bikes of people who would rather talk about their adventures than actually take one. They're usually always wrapped head to toe in high vis too, so you can spot them at a distance and give them a wide berth. Hopefully you like Starbucks coffee too, because I'm pretty sure GS riders are obligated to park out front at least once a week. If you want to avoid getting yourself a nerdmobile, then head over to yammynoob.co and get yourself signed up to win one of our giveaway bikes. We've got your Ducatis, we've got your Triumphs, we've got your Yamahas, we've even got a whole new manufacturer we've never had before. That one's coming out pretty soon. It's a secret too, and if you were on the Discord server, you'd already know. The Discord server is the best place to hang out and talk bikes with hundreds of other riders, soon-to-be riders and bikeless bros alike. We've got channels for sharing memes, buying and selling gear, and of course a channel for fast 
Lost Boys and Track Rats to talk about lap times. We've spent a lot of time giving the server a facelift, so if you're interested in checking it out, now's the best time. Click the link down below and join the best community for motorcyclists on the internet. You also get signed up to win some free bikes, just in case you forgot. 100% certified, nerd free. Unlike number five, the Harley Davidson Street 500. Now, a big part of me really wanted to put the Rebel 3 and 500 in this place, but then I thought about it and realized that not only is the Street 500 way dorkier, but it's the bad kind of dork that huffs glue in the back of the short bus and can't seem to figure out why 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 5. For those of you who don't know, the Street 500 was Harley's ill-fated attempt to create a beginner cruiser that they could sell around the world. It was a liquid-cooled 494cc engine derived from the V-Rod, which sounds like a recipe for success, right? I mean, who wouldn't want a baby V-Rod? Except it looks like this. Take a good long look. Yeah. Not to mention that it only put down 29 foot-pounds of torque, and it weighed in at 489 pounds. Just take a second to think about that. It's a bike that weighs almost as much as your mom and puts down beginner sport bike power. Let's just say that this bike wasn't exactly destined for greatness. To add insult to injury, the bike handled badly, it didn't stop, and it was way too corked up from the factory. All this made for a bike that was derided by Harley diehards and motorcycle journalists journalists alike, and finally made the 883 look like less of a girl's bike. They did make a 750cc version of this bike, which yours truly started on, but it was basically the same motorcycle, so while it was faster than the Sportsters, it was still a pretty lame entry. They sort of fixed it with the Street Rod, which yours truly also owned, and gee, a lot of my bikes are showing up on this list. I guess there must be some internal self-loathing in there somewhere. But anyway, the Street Rod didn't exactly save the day. The Street 500 is a officially out of production now, and if for some reason you want to be a pleather daddy, you can still find them in the used marketplace now. Moving on, we've got number four, the Yamaha TW200. Now, admittedly, I do see the appeal of this motorcycle. I mean, it's a dual sport with a super low seat height, a sub 300 pound wet weight, and a massive rear tire with edge grip for days. But let's face it, you might want to ride it, but you wouldn't want to show it off to your friends. It's definitely a bit of a guilty pleasure motorcycle, but what it lacks in looks and show-stopping appeal and the ability to reach highway speeds, it makes up for in usability. It's the perfect noob bike off road. It makes enough power to putter down any trail, but it's also basically impossible to stall due to its tractor factor. In the glamorous world of dual sports where every bike looks exactly the same and makes around 30 horsepower, the TW200 is definitely the odd man out. While the DRZ hasn't been updated since 1999, the TW200 hasn't been updated since the 1980s, which makes it the most hipster dual sport of all time. Grab yourself your nicest flannel, your beard wax, hit the Yamaha dealer, and get laughed at by your local off-road group on this goofy little mule. Number three, all beginner sport bikes. I'm sorry, but all of these bikes are pretty dorky. Are they fun? Sure. Are they a great way to get into motorcycling? Absolutely. Are they very obviously a baby version of bigger sport bikes? 100%. Look, as much as I admit that sport bikes aren't really my favorite style of bike, I can't help but find myself drawn to the looks of the R1 or the Penegale. They're drop-dead gorgeous motorcycles, and who wouldn't want to start on a bike like that? Well, unfortunately, the beginner bike offerings from the Big Four are all essentially the same motorcycle underneath, just with different looking plastics. They're all these little singles or parallel twins with upright ergonomics and completely uninspiring engine notes. They're basically some little kid trying to wear his dad's clothes to look like a grown-up. Yes, I understand that starting on a 600 is a horrible idea, and if you want to start on a sport bike that you can learn on, you're basically pigeonholed into one of these little bikes, but I do offer you an alternative. The Husqvarna Svartpilen 401. It's a unique looking bike that even vets are wowed by. It has some awesome technology from fully adjustable suspension to various rider modes and the ability to go off-road. It'll hang with your sport bike buddies, but when the road ends, you can keep on going. Or maybe you don't love the weird cyberpunk retro future looks. Well, the KLX 300 SM is basically the same deal, but just a little bit taller. You don't have to start on the same old R3 or Ninja 400 anymore. There are better options out there. 
Now the next two are basically tied for number one, but I am going to give number two to the Versus 650 simply because of the raw nerd energy our number one bike has. Yep, you knew the Versus 650 would be on this list somewhere, and it's a bike so average that Zach Quartz put it at the zero zero point of his daily rider chart. It's the two-wheeled version of the color beige. It's a 650 pack in the same old-school 180-degree crank, which means that you won't be putting an exhaust on it, which you weren't going to do anyway because you ran the numbers and realized that adding 0.4 extra horsepower after deleting the cat wasn't worth the cash investment. Instead, you're going to put your money into something useful, like taller windscreens and saddlebags, so you can pack your little bag lunch and ride to the office in comfort and, well, not style, but for lack of a better word, we'll call it style. The Versus 650 is for the person who wants to experience the world from two wheels, but doesn't want to bother anyone while they do it. They'll have no loud noises, they won't split lanes unless it's 100% legal, and they'll cruise at 5 miles an hour under the speed limit in the right-hand lane. For the life of me, I don't understand what Ari Henning sees in his verses, and if I ever get the opportunity to ask him one question, it would simply be, why? And so we arrive at the pinnacle of the nerdiest motorcycles, and if you haven't guessed it already, there is no bike more dorky than the Honda NC750. This is basically what a scooter wants to be when it grows up. Honda called it the new concept back in 2012, but now in the year of our Lord Rossi 2020, it's just that one bike with DCT in a frunk. Look, I get it, DCT transmissions get more people into riding, and electric bikes don't have clutches and somehow they're cool, but having a DCT motorcycle is like driving an automatic inline-4 Mustang with EcoBoost. The whole experience is just not there. You have to put the bike into gear by pushing a button, and there's a so-called sport mode that hangs gears just a tad bit longer, and it's got a full-on trunk where the gas tank should be. It's basically big enough to fit a full-face helmet because you won't need that space for a big engine or an airbox if you're running errands around town. If you're looking at picking up an NC750, please. There are so many other bikes that are just as easy to ride, but aren't as aggressively dorky. You don't have to live that life. Fact. Some cats are allergic to people. It's rare and it's hard to diagnose given that we bathe more commonly than other species, but it does happen. And just like that, when you least expect it, Cowboy Aim is back at it once again. Why don't you click this video right here, you let me know what you think of it, okay? Leave me a nice comment, subscribe to the channel, leave me a like, do all those nice things, and y'all have yourselves a good day.